let us see about full wave bridge rectifier supplying rle load full bridge converter has two modes of operation first one it can act as a rectifier it means that it supplies the ac power to the dc load it can also act as an inverter that is from load side it can supply the power to the ac source so by varying the firing angle you can change the mode of operation of this converter so it is called a converter because it can work either as a rectifier or as an inverter so in both modes of operation ser will be always forward biased and current through the ser will always flow from anode to cathode so always current flows in this direction only anode to cathode anode to cathode first let us see about rectifier mode of operation the load is of r l e type so you should remember one thing ser will be forward biased only when vm sin alpha that is this waveform should be greater than e so that thyristor will be forward biased so give alpha greater than this angle and this alpha when it is less than 90 degree it operates as a rectifier so t1 and t2 will conduct from alpha to pi plus alpha that is for 180 degrees and t3 and t4 will conduct from pi plus alpha to 2 pi plus alpha again 180 degrees let us see the operation during the positive half cycle so this will be positive and this is negative and t1 and t2 will be forward biased during positive half cycle and when given alpha you see alpha should be given after this junction so this is the point where the source voltage exceeds the back uh, back emf e so when it exceeds this one you can give the alpha value you should not give alpha value less than this one because at that time ser will be reverse biased so always give alpha after this junction point so t1 and t2 are given gate pulse at this point so during positive half cycle t1 and t2 conducts in this direction so the current through the load will be from a to b whereas the current through the source will be from c to d so in this direction current is flowing okay now this is the supply voltage and you see the output voltage during positive half cycle t1 and t2 conducts so from alpha to pi plus alpha you follow the input voltage waveform and you see the load current so at alpha it starts to increase and it reaches a maximum value and that at pi it again start to decrease so this is a continuous conduction mode it means that output current remains continuous and if you see the source current during t1 and t2 current direction is from c to d so this is taken as positive direction so it flows from alpha to pi plus alpha this point pi plus alpha it is positive next we will see about negative half cycle so in negative half cycle this is minus and this is positive so t3 and t4 will be forward bias so this plus is connected here so t3 t4 will be conducting and it carries the 
load current so again current flow is from a to b in load whereas this current flows in this way here and you see the direction this is c and this is d current flow is from d to c so you can see here current flow has reversed in in the negative half cycle so only source current since it is ac supply source current is alternating but output current will be always positive because it is dc side so it is always positive whereas source current changes its direction let us now find the average voltage so v average is equal to alpha to pi plus alpha you are getting two waveforms in one cycle so multiply by 2 so if you simplify it you will get 2 vm by pi cos alpha so average voltage already we have derived so many times so it is easy next what you have to infer from this is when alpha equal to 0 v naught is so cos 0 is 1 so v naught is 2 vm by pi when alpha is 45 degree v naught is so you substitute cos alpha 45 degree you will get 1 by 2 so you will get vm by pi so 90 degree cos 90 is 0 so output is 0 and 180 cos alpha will become minus 1 so you will get minus 2 vm by pi now let us draw the plot between alpha and v naught so actually this v naught i have taken the v average so drawing the plot between v naught and alpha so alpha should be in degrees so mark 0 45 90 and 180 you can mark it for any angle now what is at 0 degree you will get v naught as 2 vm by pi okay then at 45 degree you should get vm by pi okay and 90 degree it is 0 so let me draw this one you will get some curve like this and again at 180 degree you should get minus 2 vm by pi so, so at 180 degree it is minus so in this region it acts as a rectifier and here that is when it is less than 90 degree it acts as a rectifier and when it is greater than 90 degree it acts as an inverter because you can see that v naught polarity has changed after 90 degree whatever angle you substitute you will get a negative value it means that v does uh, v naught is negative now we will see the power flow direction in the rectifier mode we have seen that alpha is less than 90 degree in rectifier mode and what is v naught we have seen that if you find the average value for this one you are getting a positive value so v naught is positive i naught as i told earlier it is always positive uh, so p naught is v naught into i naught multiply these two you will get the power so that will be positive so power flows from source to load in rectifier mode so next we will see about inverter mode of operation so in this first alpha should be greater than 90 degree then the polarity of e should be reversed that is the plus and minus terminals are interchanged so that this e supplies power to the source and this is called a line commutated inverter because the thyristors are commutated because of this line source and this type of uh, inverter mode is used in regenerative breaking of DC motor. So let us draw the output waveform for this inverter mode. So here you should be clear that so you are giving alpha should be greater than 90 degree. So this P 
peak point is 90 degree so make alpha greater than 90 degree so here gate pulses is given so alpha at alpha t1 and t2 will conduct tick pi plus alpha so it will follow this waveform till pi plus alpha and again t3 and t4 are turned on here and output voltage will be this one now you can see that i0 is positive in this case also always i0 will be positive because load current direction cannot change okay only output voltage may change depending upon the alpha value but i0 will be always uh, same because thy resistor is a unidirectional device so current can flow in only one direction in the thy resistor now we will see the power flow direction in the inverter mode so alpha is greater than 90 degree so we have calculated the average value so we what is average value 2 v m by cos alpha so when alpha equal to 90 degree degree v naught equal to 0 and you find for remaining angles you will get a minus sign here it indicates that average value has become negative because we are getting more negative portion so v naught is negative i naught is positive so if you multiply these two you will get power as negative so power always flows from load to source in case of inverter mode the points to remember here are in rectifier mode alpha is less than 90 degree v naught is positive so power is also positive and natural commutation occurs in rectifier mode in inverter mode alpha is greater than 90 degree v naught uh, sorry polarity of e should be reversed and v naught is negative and p naught is also negative so power flows from load to source and the commutation will be a line commutation these are some of the references if you like the video do subscribe to read electric vehicle channel thank you